This was one of the worst school shootings in U.S. history. And the 911 calls from inside the room, the footage of officers outside the doors as children are being killed, are truly disturbing and painful and infuriating. But the question of whether Arandondo and Gonzalez should be criminally responsible for failure to take specific action during the shooting is not so simple. Typically, an officer, a department, a city would face lawsuits, right, for botching a response. But a criminal indictment is a much bigger step with major implications. For one thing, only two officers are charged out of over 350 members of law enforcement on site. And the devastating report from the Texas House Committee that investigated the shooting found that there were systemic failures and egregious poor decision making throughout the process and across multiple authorities. And let me be clear, there is no excuse for what happened. But there is also the precedent that this sets, right? These charges are essentially based on officers' failure to act. Could this mean more cops start getting charged for what they don't do on a scene? Joining us now is criminal defense attorney Joe Tamburino. He's represented police officers in his 30-plus years of practice and has also followed and written about the response in Uvalde. Thanks very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right, first let me just get your reaction to these indictments more broadly. Thanks for having me on, Dan. I agree with them. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be convicted, but I think the indictments are proper. And Dan, you mentioned about whether or not there's going to be precedent with this case. There already is precedent. The precedent is with the co-defendants to Derek Chauvin, the officer who killed George Floyd back in May of 2020. His co-defendants, officers Tao, King, and Lane, were convicted in federal court in February of 2022, basically uh, two years later. And they were convicted for a failure to act, that they were deliberately indifferent to Mr. Floyd's medical needs. So there already is precedent. But that is a case, um, you're right about the types of charges, but obviously a different kind of fact pattern, regardless of what one thinks about uh, those indictments, a different kind of fact pattern than here, where you're talking more broadly about failure to respond quickly enough, right? And many people blame police on a regular basis for not doing enough, uh, not responding fast enough, not doing more. And that's different than what happened in the Chauvin case. That's why I think there is the danger. And again, I'm not saying it was the wrong thing to do to indict. But the reason I'm asking the question is because it does raise the the question of whether other cops will now get charged for not reacting fast enough. Well, I'm going to disagree a little bit there, because here's why. Every case, every criminal prosecution, state or federal, is going to have a different fact pattern. But the law remains the same. And the law that was used was federal law, 18 U.S.C. 242, against the Chauvin officers. And they were accused of being deliberately indifferent to the medical needs of Mr. Floyd. Well, that could be the same here. I think it was a mistake for that, well, for Attorney General Merrick Garland back in May of 22, when this horrific event happened in Uvalde to say there's not going to be a criminal investigation. They're just going to investigate civilly. Dan, you and I both know that a civil investigation is nothing compared to a criminal investigation. Why? Because in a criminal investigation, you could bring every witness up there, all 376 police officers who responded to this event, and you could get them under oath in front of a grand jury testifying. And they have to testify unless they have some privilege like they're going to incriminate themselves. But it sounds to me like... But there was never any of that. But it sounds to me like the broader point is that you believe that it's a good thing if cops are prosecuted in more cases where the conduct is egregious. Is that fair to say? On a case-by-case basis, I think it's going to be very few and far between. And believe me, I have supported law enforcement throughout the years. I have defended police officers. But I think in some egregious situations, like you have in Evaldi, there should have at least have been a federal grand jury investigating this. But that's a separate question. That's a separate question of whether there should have been a federal grand jury. We're talking about the actual charges that were brought here. And again, when I hear about even cop who messes up in, you know, a major way. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider.
And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.